sometimes pets have accidents. Sometimes they leave a mess behind and the owners are embarrassed and the dogs are embarrassed. And then what do you do? So I was really excited when I found Allie Smith today and that she was going to be able to come on our show. And the reason I was excited is because she has trained over 1,200 dogs. So she used to be a pet setter and then she moved into being a pet trainer. And she's got one of the best dog blogs that is up and running right now. And so she's got a wealth of information for us. And she's the owner of a company called Rebarkable. Isn't that a cool name? So please help me welcome Ali Smith to our show. Hi. How are you today? Oh, you're good. Thank you very much for having me. I'm really like excited to get the opportunity to talk to your audience. Because I think, you know, we all love our animals and we all want the best for them. But you guys have a particularly unique placement in this situation. And it's going to be a really interesting one to dive into. I want to stop for a second and I want to say hey to Rachel Rose. She says, so glad to be here. I have three dogs and I have a never ending job picking up their hair. I'm actually collecting the hair to make a homemade knitted jumper. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I've often debated whether you can use dog fur as like insulation for the house. Cause I'm like, huh. <laughs> There's a lot of it, huh? Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> Natasha Allred says, my English bulldog has made my cloth couch stink because of him yeasty nose. How would you clean the couch to get the stink out? That's a great question. Yeah, yeast, yeast is a fun one. I think that's going to be vinegar, isn't it? Vinegar tends to neutralize the yeast and what would grow because you know that yeast is a living organism, right? So you've got to kill the actual yeast itself. But the other thing is, is with your bulldog, Take a look at his diet because yeasty dogs tend to have something in their diet that's encouraging yeast production. So if you can tinker with his diet a little bit, you should actually get his yeast down, which once you've cleaned your sofa will stop the reinfection of the sofa and it will save you a lot of cleaning and it will probably save him a lot of, not stress, but like itchiness. Yeast isn't nice when it's in places it shouldn't be, so... Yeah. No, and I'm glad you brought that up because there are little animals that stink sometimes and mm. the homeowners will try to just brush their teeth or try to think of things. And I'm glad you brought mm. up changing the diet because sometimes diet is it sweet. is diet related and that's how they're processing and digesting it. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And it's one of the core components, even on a smelly dog. Like if your dog has a really particularly pungent odor to them generally, you change their diet to something slightly higher quality the smell tends to reduce, which explaining that to people sometimes is almost like mind blowing. But, you know, it's hard when we've been sort of marketed, you know, these really low quality kibbles and we go, oh, but the TV said it was great or, you know, similar. <laughs> then, well, it's true, though, isn't it? Marketing these days is really powerful. So, yeah, it sometimes it's questioning also what works for your dog specifically, because much like us, dogs, cats gerbils everything has a specific biome that everything works through and if it doesn't agree with them specifically it doesn't matter what it did for other dogs it's all about your dog or cat <laughs> well and that's really important to know mm. because sometimes like you said we fall victim to marketing and then on the other end of it there will be an accident or something and then how mm. do we clean up that particular dog and I think many people, and I'm not saying all people, because I know there are people that do lots of studies mm -hmm. and research and they research the breed yes. and all the things. But there are a lot of people that just end up with a dog and maybe it's a loose dog or a stray dog yeah. or a rescue or something. And they just bring the dog in and then they haven't read a manual and they don't know how to take care of the dog. And so they don't know how to train it. They don't uh -huh. know what the particular specificities of mm -hmm. the dog's diet or any of those things. So they're kind of like winging it, you know? Yeah. And I think that tends to happen with a lot of like trendy breeds. There's this really big misconception in my industry, and this is slightly tangential to what we're talking about, but the doodles and your cockapoos and so like your labradoodle, your cockapoo, that they tend to be like neurotic, crazy dogs. But it's actually usually not that they're neurotic or crazy or untrainable or any of these weird labels that they get. It's actually just that they've been marketed so strongly as a beginner friendly dog that all the beginners get them. And then they realize they have all of these needs. <laughs> and they're like, well, what do you mean I've got to take them for like three hours a walk a day and stimulate their brain and train them <laughs> and do all this? Stuff? And it's like, yeah, because the poodle's in there, they are smart. <laughs> so yes, they shed less, not totally shed free, but less. 
but they are smart. And when they're smart, if you don't push the brain, they get into trouble because that's, you know, what's the phrase? The devil makes work for idle thumbs. Definitely happens with dog brains too. So, and that's really interesting. I think mm. that's a lot like people where, yes. you know, a tiny little baby seems like it's easy to take care of, but it's mm. actually, as it grows, it grows in oh, responsibility yeah. as well. Oh, oh yes. So, oh, <laughs> This has been really highly interesting. Thank you so much, Ali, for joining us today and for having this conversation. I want to thank all of you guys that joined us and have all of your comments here. If there's anything we missed, because we do have some here about anxiety and what happens with your dog, we will answer those questions for everybody that's watching the replay and also for those of you that joined us that we didn't get your questions answered. Thanks again for today. Until we meet again, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it. Thanks very much for having me.